Okay, so we're talking about, we're kind of, 11.1 is kind of um, slowly introducing us to what we're eventually going to look at, which are Taylor series. That's kind of the whole thing that we're getting to here. Um, but we're going to start off finite and then eventually go to infinite. So we're, we're going to look at approximating functions with polynomials. And you've read through the book, and I just want to do a few examples. I really hope that you picked up in the book that... Um, why are we doing this? Well, what we want to do is we want to, the idea is that we're taking a function that could be complicated, um, could be complicated to take the derivative of, could be complicated to even just plug in values. I know we have calculators and computers. Um, if you're programming something and you're going to be running a lot of iterations of something, it takes time to do that, right? Even if it doesn't seem like a lot of time, it, it could take a lot of time based on how many iterations you're running. So if I can use you know, a linear function as opposed, or a quadratic, as opposed to something like a radical function, a square root function, um, that might take me less time in the long run if I can approximate it using more simple function. Okay, so that's the whole idea of this. So let's look at part A. So part A, let's start off with this example. Find the linear approximation polynomial and the quadratic approximation polynomial for f of x centered at x equals 4. So basically, if we put this in terms of um, Taylor polynomials, is we want a Taylor polynomial of order 1 and a Taylor polynomial of order 2. So Taylor polynomial of order 1, or a linear approximation, right, is just going to be f of whatever I'm centered at. So that'll be f of 4 plus f primed of 4 times x minus 4. And they develop, they kind of go through that and develop it for you. I know reading math books can be hard, but um, just like anything that's difficult, right? Learning to shoot free throws, doing something like that takes practice. If you don't practice, then you're never going to get better at it. So the f second order polynomial, um, Taylor polynomial, is I always, you don't have to reinvent the real wheel here, right? It's always going to be the same as p sub 1, and then we're just going to add on another term. And that's going to be the second derivative divided by 2 factorial times x minus 4 squared. So that's going to be the, and it's, you don't technically need that factorial because 2 factorial is just 2, um, but that's going to be my quadratic. So notice what do I need? I need a couple of things here, right? I need to know what f of 4 is. I need to know the derivative, right, for sure. I also need to know the second derivative, right, to be able to do this. So what I like to do is kind of get all my pieces together and then I'll start plugging in. So let's, let's do a little bit of work here. So I know f of x is x to the 1 half. I'm going to rewrite it like that because I know I'm going to take the derivative f primed of x then is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And then because I know I want a second um, order Taylor polynomial, I'll go ahead and take the second derivative, which is a negative 1 fourth x to the negative 3 halves. Okay. Now, what am I going to need? I need f of 4. I need f primed evaluated at 4. And I need f double primed evaluated at 4. So... Let's just do that underneath here. And once I've done all of that, it'll be easy to just plug this into my polynomials. So, um, you know, square root of 4 is 2, obviously. f primed of 4, well, that's going to be 1 over 2 times 1 over the square root of 4, which is 1 fourth. And then f double primed of 4, um, I have a negative 1 fourth times. Now, remember what how to do this. 4 to the 3 halves, remember what does that 2 mean? That's how I always look at doing these, is do the fraction first. This 2, because it's in the denominator, that means take the square root. And then what does that 3 tell me to do? Cube it. So this is 2 cubed, so that would be 8. Multiply times a negative 1 fourth is a negative 1 32nd, it looks like. Cool, great. So now we're ready to go. So I'm going to take my... Um, Oh, whoops, looks like I didn't quite get rid of everything I should have from the last lecture. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and plug into my polynomials. So p sub 1, right, is f of 4, which is 2, plus f primed of 4, which I see is 1 fourth, all times x minus 4. Okay, and, you know, if I simplify this a little bit, um, I could take the 1 fourth through, I get 1 fourth x. 1 fourth times negative 4 is a negative 1. 
And then if I add that to 2, I get minus 1. Especially because I know I'm not going to simplify it like that with the quadratic, but I know I'm going to be plugging it in, right? So p sub 2 then, what do I know? Well, I know that p sub 2 is just p sub 1, right? And then some more stuff added on to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put p sub 1 in its simplified form. Might as well. And then plus, right, this stuff right here, okay? So uh, the second derivative was a negative 1 32nd divided by 2 times x minus 4 quantity squared. So it looks like I get 1 4th x minus 1 minus 1 64th times x minus 4 quantity squared. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to simplify that. And some would argue that you wouldn't want to maybe even simplify this because the number you're going to be putting in an x value. But there's my first order, there's my linear approximation, and then there's my quadratic approximation. Okay, so that was part A. So let's look at part B. Use these polynomials that we found in A to approximate the square root of 3.9. So there was a reason that we, that it was given that our center was at 4, right? Because what that does is it allows the linear and the quadratic approximations to be pretty close um, as long as we're close to 4, okay? I wouldn't want to use these, uh, I wouldn't want to use these guys right here, right, if I was anywhere not close to 4. Like if I want you to approximate the square root of 2.1 using these, it wouldn't make sense because I'm not, that my center wasn't at 2. So I'm near 4, that's where I'm going to approximate them. So I'm going to, and of course we can find, and maybe we'll do that and show you kind of the absolute value thing, but I'm going to take p sub 1 of 3.9, right? Because I know I'm going to be um, close to 4. Oh, there's my calculator. All right, so if I plug that in, I'm going to take um, 1 fourth of 3.9 and then subtract 1. So right, I just put that into what I got here, 3.9 minus 1, and I get a negative 0 0.025. If I put that into p sub 2, into that 3.9, remember I know it's going to be p sub 1, right, plus the other, and then the other stuff, which is a negative 1 64th, 3.9 minus 4 quantity squared. And we get um, a negative 0 0.025165. I'm going to go up pretty far because I want to show you um, kind of the error here. So that is using the linear approximation and the quadratic approximation to approximate the square root of 3.9. Now the actual, right, luckily I have a calculator. My actual square root of 3.9, if I go ahead and do that, is, oh no, <laughs> something went wrong here. What did I do wrong? Um, okay, you guys, how do I know I did something wrong? Oh, this should be plus one. Okay, so this is a really good lesson and you guys have probably, you were probably screaming at the, at the thing here. All right, so here's what I get for square root of 3.9. This is a really, really, really good lesson. I'm actually, I didn't mean to make this mistake, but I did and it's good. This is the actual, um, square root of 3.9, and I should have realized that up here. That's silly, right? The square root of 3.9 should be close to the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So um, if if Sarah had been thinking, which apparently she is not at the moment, which is unfortunate for you guys, <laughs> um, I should have known something was off. And where was that off? Up here, uh, this was minus 4, and so that should have been a plus 1. Sorry about that. Darn it. Let's redo that for sure. Um, yeah, that's better. That's much, 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 whoops, uh, much better. Let me get rid of this guy really quick. Maybe. Oh, maybe it won't let me. That's, that's unfortunate. Okay, anyway, um, what do we get? Then I get 1.975. Oh my goodness. That's embarrassing. It's fine. No one watches my videos anyway. It's okay. I'm just talking to myself. All right, and then what do we get here? I get 1.9748437.5. So you guys, I mean, this is pretty close. My error, let's look at P1, what my absolute error is. So my absolute error, if I subtract those, it doesn't even matter which one I take. First, I can take, um, you know, 1.975 minus the actual value of the square root of 3.9. Uh, make sure I'm going to do this, 975 minus that actual answer, 
Um, yeah, this is great. What is the difference? What is the error? 0 0.000158, right? So that's pretty awesome. Um, if I do the other one, 1.9748. 4375 and I subtract the square root of 3.9. Um, wow, that's even better. For P2, the error, if I take the difference between the actual value, it's 0 0.12345198419. And I could even find the percentage that we're off. That's going to be a pretty low percentage, you guys. Um, you divide that by the square root of 3.9 and then multiply by 100 to make it a percentage. Um, so that's pretty great. That's pretty awesome that only with a quadratic approximation, I can get really, really close to the actual number. Again, this is going to be helpful, right, if we were going to be um, doing long-term stuff. Also, we're going to, you're going to see, I promise, eventually um, when you get to like differential equations, it's pretty awesome. Um, some pretty cool stuff happens when you deal with these Taylor series. Let's look at another example and then, um, you know, I'll probably call it kind of good. Yeah. All right. So one more example with these Taylor polynomials. Um, and then maybe I'll talk really quick about the remainder. We're not going to go into that too much right now. Um, read through that information about the remainder. It's good to know because we're going to deal with that later on. Um, but, you know, in this section right now, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time about the remainder stuff. Okay. Um, but let's say, let's approximate the um let's approximate a number that looks a little bit weird right so let's let's approximate the natural log of 1.05 using um a taylor polynomial of degree three or n equals three okay so um what i need to figure out is we need to figure out well what is the function and where am I going to center that function? Okay, so of degree three. So the function, so I want to approximate, this is a number. So I want to approximate this number, the natural log of 1.05. So the function I'm going to be dealing with is natural log. Okay, and where am I going to center this at? Remember, these only work if you're close to the number. So what number are we close to? We're clearly close to one. So I'm going to be centered at A equals one. So what do I know? I know a piece of one, right, is going to be f of one plus f primed of one times x minus one. Actually, I don't even need p1. It says of degree three, so let's go straight to degree three. There's my piece of one. And then remember to get p sub two, right, I would add on f double prime to evaluate at one over two. No, don't do that over 2 times x minus 1 squared. And then finally for uh, order 3, this is f triple primed of 1. Oh, don't do that. There we go. All over 3 factorial times x minus 1 cubed. All right, so what do I need? I need some derivatives. So first of all, my, my function, right, is the natural log of x. The derivative is one over x, but because I know I'm taking more than one, one derivative, I'm gonna make that x to the negative one. That means the second derivative is a negative x to the negative two, and the third derivative, and this is all lovely because it's all at once, so, you know, it's gonna be not too hard to do, is two x to the negative three. This is a great example. F of one, natural log of one is zero, so I expect Right, this guy is pretty close to zero, you guys, or to one, right? The 1.05 is. So our answers are going to be pretty close. When I when I use this polynomial to estimate that, I'm going to be pretty close to zero. F primed of one, well, that's one over one, also known as one. <laughs> F double primed at one is a negative one over one squared. That is negative one. And then finally, F triple primed at one Right, it looks like to me will just be two. So here's my Taylor polynomial of order three. Okay, so um, my Taylor polynomial of order three, my f of zero, f of one here is zero. f primed of one is one, so that's just gonna be x minus one. f double primed of one is a negative one, but I have the two on the bottom, so I have one half, 
x minus 1 squared. And then finally, this guy right here, f triple prime of 1, that's 2. So let's think about that for a moment. Um, so this guy right here, I'm going to have 2 over. And then remember, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So see, you guys, those 2s are going to cancel. So I'm going to get 1 third. That's a cool, this is a cool one, times x minus 1 cubed. I wonder if we did the fourth one, if it would be 1 fourth. Probably not bad. No, no, it could be. Who knows? Oh, no. Six? I think it is. That's really neat. I think I remember, <laughs> I should know this. The Taylor series for natural log is pretty interesting. So, all right. So there's my Taylor polynomial of degree three. I want to estimate the natural log of 1.05, right? So I'm going to take P sub three, evaluate it at 1.05, which equals, so when I plug that in, one minus 1.05 minus one is 0.05 minus one half times, well that'll be 0 0.05 squared, plus, you know, if you can make your life a little easier when you plug it into your calculator, it might help. I know that's where I make a lot of my mistakes, is just plugging it into my calculator wrong, or obviously um, dealing with <laughs> Um, dealing with negatives and positives as we saw in the last example. So you're not alone, don't worry. You're not alone. Oh good, so I'm pretty close to zero. I get 0 0.04879, which I would expect to be fairly close to zero because I know the natural the, the natural log or the natural log is apparently. I'm gonna call that right now. I know the natural log of one is zero. Let's see what the natural log of 1.5 actually is using my handy dandy calculator. Oh wow, this is really close. Um, this is 0 0.04879 So I should have gone out further. Let me, let's go out further or farther. I don't know. I have a sister who's an English teacher, so I imagine she would be on me. Further versus farther, I know that there's like one of them is if it's an actual value. So I think this is, I don't know, I should say it farther maybe. <laughs> So guys, they they match up. I mean, the accuracy on this pretty simple polynomial, just a third degree polynomial, which would be easy to put into a computer program. Um, it'd be easy to take the derivative of. Look at that. They match up to five decimal places. So my error, if I subtract these, so if I take that um, minus 0 0.04879166667, um, oh, it should have been 6667. Sorry about that. Um, if I subtract that, my error is 0 0.12345150025. That is pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. I mean, every time I do these, I just, I'm like, that's amazing. I just love it. All right, you guys, again, read through the remainder stuff. I'm not going to focus too much on that right now at this level. The idea that you want to get from this 11.1 .1 is just this idea of, um, approximating using polynomials and that I can get better and better approximations of a function by taking more and more terms of that Taylor polynomial. Let me know if you have questions.